Welcome to the Statistic NDD YouTube channel. Lately I made a couple of videos about writing efficient R code, speeding up R code and today I want to focus specifically on speeding up ggplot2 and saving plots efficiently and faster than, than the default. And we do that using the RAG package that you may not have heard about. The data we're using today are again from the tsort.info website. You're free to use this data as long as you acknowledge the source, link to the tsort.info website and supply the version number. So we're using version 2800044 and the data set that I'm using, you can find it on my GitHub profile as well, um, contains data for over 70,000 songs and albums but we just focus on the top six artists and bands in terms of the number of songs and albums that they placed in the data. So Elvis Presley is top with 510 entries and the last band that just made the top six are the Beatles with 267 entries. So the plotting code that we're using looks like this. I created a ggplot diagram but I wrapped it into a function so that I can use a function call repeatedly and don't have to copy and paste the plotting code. So it's a scatter plot with an added smoothing function, geomsmooth layer. Um, we create facets by the artist, so we get six subplots. Um, yeah, and it will take some calculation time for the smoothing, of course, but it's not too much. So up onto the timings. Um, so I create the plot just using the my plot function, um, but I don't show it here, so I do it invisibly, but I can still save it. And the two code blocks are almost identical. I use the same width and height specification and the only difference is that in the second case I'm using the rag device by specifying device equals hg underscore png. You may have seen R code where you can use the png function to open a device and then write plotting code that can also be a base R plot. Um, of course I would recommend ggplot2 code but both is possible and then you end off by closing the device using def.off um, but here we have a shortcut by just specifying the device within the ggsafe function. And agg underscore png is a supplement for the png default device. Right, so the, you can see the difference um, in the timings. I'm using the TikTok package for the timings here. So in the first case using the default Cairo device, um, the code takes 1.81 seconds to execute and in the second case it's more than twice as fast, 0.86 seconds, um, just by changing the device. So that goes to show that the rack device um, can be um, a game changer in terms of execution time. Um, okay, so it's as simple as simple as that. Let's have a look at the plots, and I can move back and forth between these two slides, and you see the plots are exactly the same. Uh, and here I just include the two graphics that were saved on the previous slide and you see that um, one plot is the default PNG and the other one is the rag powered um, plot. Right, um, I also display the dimensions. So these two numbers 1500 and 2100 is, are the resolution X and Y direction and the number 3 is for 3 channels, it's for RGB, red, green and blue channels. So that goes to show that the speed improvement does not mean a loss of quality. We have exactly the same two plots, um, the same quality um, and the rack approach is much faster. Right, so to finish off a little bit more about the rack package. So rack stands for um, our implementation of AGG and AGG is the anti-grain geometry library, an open source plotting library written in C++. So what we saw today is performance but that's not the only main feature and not the only um, reason of existence for the RAG package. It's also about anti-aliasing. So the Cairo device is not fully anti-aliased. Anti-aliasing means um, smoothing lines and plots. Um, AGG or RAG is fully anti-aliased, meaning that also fills are anti-aliased. Another pain point in plotting is often text rendering and especially um, 
fonts, access to fonts, um, default um, non-default fonts like um, user-defined fonts. If you download them, for example, from Google Fonts, um, it's not always easy to include uh, use them in your plots, and people have often um, been forced to use different solutions on different operating systems. So RAG also targets that um, to provide a solution that just works on any operating system, system independence here. So that's also a great um, use case for the RAG package. You can find out more at the dedicated website at rlib.org and the Tidyverse team has blocked repeatedly about RAG so you can follow progress there. So here I included three links to a blog post from 2019, 20 and 21. So RAG has been in the making for some time and it's a great package. Right, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe find it useful. If you have a lot of plotting jobs to do with using ggplot2, you can speed it up using RAG. All the best for that. All the best for your R projects in general. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing the channel if you haven't already. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.